Today we're using the camera tracker and a few useful techniques to get a 3D feel on a 2D tracked scene. Hey what's up guys, this is Ryan and welcome back to another late night tutorial. Uh, I'm trying to be quiet, my wife is upstairs sleeping because it's a little late, but hey, we're here, we're knocking it out, so let's do it. Today we're talking about uh, this nice little highlighting effect of this telephone pole wire going across the wire, down the pole, across the sidewalk and into the building. And it's an easy effect and it's clean and simple, but we're using some pretty fun techniques. We're gonna use a 3D camera tracker. We're gonna use a free plugin that uh, allows you to move the anchor point easily. And we're gonna use that tracking data to also do some rotoing. So let's, uh, let's jive, jive, let's jive right in. Hand jive, what? Oh gosh, I didn't just do that. All right, cool, so here we go, we got our footage and let's go ahead and take a look at it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow this line down the pole. We're gonna kind of go with the shot across the sidewalk. We're gonna have to roto these cones out of the way and the line's gonna go right into the building right here. So let's get going. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down, make a new comp out of it. Let's go ahead and fit this and I'll go ahead and do Control J there to get us that full quality. All right, cool. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is let's just make the square that's gonna be our highlighting box. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, make a new solid here. I'm gonna go with this highlighty turquoisey sort of teal blue. And all I'm gonna do for this is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, we're gonna have this be a 3D layer eventually, but I'm just gonna scale it down and let me show you this free script, which is really awesome. It's called Move Anchor Point. Uh, this version, and it's dockable tier two. Let me go ahead and dock that. This version right here is version two and it's completely free. There is a pro version, version three, and I think it's like two or three bucks a download. I highly recommend it. I use this tool every day. So let me show you why this is kind of cool. So, so right here, I can go ahead and click to move my anchor point over. And I'm just gonna set a keyframe for the scale. Our timeline is kind of going off the time code here. That's why we have these sort of uh, weird frames here. And we're starting at 10 minutes in the footage. I wanna do control K, start the time code at zero. And that way I kind of know how many frames I'm working with here. Let's go ahead and try one second. Let's do 30 frames, set a keyframe. And I'm gonna set this to zero. So we have the scaling out motion. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's make this an ease in to get a nice little, you know, kind of ease in towards the later half of the animation there. And I might go ahead and just make it ease in a little bit more. Cool. All right, so that'll be our main box that we'll use in a little bit here. So let's go ahead and turn that off and let's start getting our data to, you know, start putting these elements in the scene here. So this camera move is actually a 2D move, but since we kind of want stuff happening in 3D space, we're gonna sort of fake it. And that's why even though it's a 2D track, we're gonna go ahead and use the 3D camera tracker and uh, get some nulls in the scene here. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna right click this guy and let's track the camera. All right, cool. So we have plenty of tracking markers to work with here. And it's just doing uh, what's known as a nodal pan. We don't have any sort of, you know, position or any sort of perspective change. So this is really just, you know, camera on a tripod moving down. So uh, there's not really a need for any kind of real 3D solve. So uh, what I might do is this, since this is kind of the middle of our scene here, I'm just going to right click and get our Nolan camera right here. And let's see, even though I don't really need this null per se, we'll just call this center. And so let's go ahead and start with this line going across the pole here. Let me select this layer again and let's see here. This will work. Let's go ahead and create a null. This is our wire position. All right, so let's start putting these in place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn our box back on. Uh, we made it a 3D layer, so it is kind of moving with the camera right now. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this position layer. Let's copy it. Let's paste it to our box. And there we go, we got it in the scene. So it's a little large right now. And for this first object, I actually don't need any of the scaling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this over. I'm just gonna 
turn it off, but with the layer selected, I want to draw a line using our mask to kind of represent this telephone wire. I'm going to stop it right there. And let's turn this back on. Let's go up here and let's add a stroke. I'm going to generate a stroke here. We're going to reveal the original image. And let's see here. All right, so it's there, but we just need to make it, let's make the brush size a little harder and let's scale it up. And let's go ahead and set the mode to screen. And let's try add. Cool, all right, so there we go. So we're starting to get our little highlight there. Let's go for three seconds and let's have it, let's have it in there. Go in the beginning here, we'll hit 0% on that. And we have our line moving with the camera and highlighting that telephone pole. So, you know, you could use a couple other effects, maybe, you know, just real fast. Let's get a little bit of a fast blur. You know, it might blend to the scene a little bit more. All right, and there we go. So there's our first line. Let's duplicate that solid. Let's get rid of the stroke and the fast blur. And what we need now is another tracking point. So let's find, let me unhide everything. And this, you know, these are pretty close to the pole. It'll, you know, we'll be able to get away with it with this tracking point. This will be our pole. Here's our new solid. So let's go ahead and grab the pole position. And we're going to add it to our new solid there. We might need to scoot it over just a little bit. So at R, let's rotate it down. And you know, I'm going to also delete the mask because we don't need that now. The scaling of this did get a little too large. So let's go ahead and let's just delete the scaling real fast. And let's adjust this to not make it so large. Maybe something like that. And let's have it just barely hit the ground. So let's also get another tracking point here. And let's see, let's create a new null. This will be our ground. And that's gonna to switch to the left side of the camera here. And let's just kind of get an approximation of how far this is our pull highlight. Let's just kind of get in a little bit better idea of how far this goes down. So the top of the knoll of the ground is actually right there. That's where the anchor point is. So we're going to adjust this to just barely kind of hit that top of the knoll there. All right, cool. So let's go back to full screen here. And now let's get back to uh, having the scale to the ground. So I need to scale the X. So let's scale it as soon as this one hits. All right, so it comes in right there. We'll go ahead and make this an ease in as well. This is where our new highlight starts. I'm just gonna do the bracket there to start the layer there. Let's scale it. Let's go, let's see, when does the shot kind of get in there? Let's fit this a little bit more. All right, so we kind of start to see the ground right here. So this is our full size scale. Let's set that right there. And let's move this to zero. All right, cool. And so when that hits, you know, we're following our trail down the ground here. And I might move this up just a little bit and scale it down just a little bit more. And it might be off center just a little bit. So I'll, even though this isn't 90 degrees anymore, it's still, still pretty close. All right, cool. So now here's where the plugin comes in again. And it really, uh, you know, it's really a time saver if you have a lot of stuff like this to do. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this pole highlight. I'm going to duplicate it and see how the anchor points at the top and it's scaling from the top. Let me bring in the move anchor point in again. And I'm going to move this anchor point to the other side and I'm going to rotate it towards the camera. Oops, I went the wrong way. Let's go the other way. 
All right, towards the camera, I'm gonna rotate it in the Z space a little bit. And move it down just a little bit so these match. And let's find where this ends. And now since we moved the anchor point with that tool, it's gonna scale out in space for us. So let's kind of just guess, you know, right around this line is kind of where the, uh, the door is. So let's go ahead and have it keep scaling out to maybe right here. Kind of going off of maybe this chalk point right here. And I'm gonna duplicate our line once more. Let me turn this on so you can see the anchor point again. And um, switch the anchor point back to the front. I'm just gonna rotate this on the Z again. Let's go, let's try 90 again. Oh wait, let's try, so I'm just, I'm just kind of rotating this until I sort of match that sidewalk again. And let's look at the keyframes here. Cool, now let me just slide this over so these scale when it hits again. And right here is kind of all the scaling we need. So I'm gonna set a keyframe right there. I'm gonna delete this other one so it doesn't keep going past the sidewalk. And with this point right here, I'm gonna sort of reposition this again to make sure our edge is kind of in line with this sidewalk. So let's just kind of see something like that. And I might actually scale it back even a little bit more. And I'm kind of just refining this to make sure it sort of matches that edge. Cool. And so it kind of, you know, it kind of doesn't match very well right here, but the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna roto these cones in here and have them be in front of our highlights. So let's just go ahead and see how everything's moving real quick. So it goes across the pole, hits, drops down. Awesome, comes towards us. And then right here, goes to the front door. Let's integrate this into the scene a little bit more by rotoing these cones to make it look like the line is actually behind it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate our footage. I'm gonna bring it to the top and I'm gonna call this far cone. I'm gonna turn it off for now. And I'm gonna grab a new solid. This will be our far mat. And let's make it something like maybe, why not pink for now? I'm gonna go ahead and make this a 3D layer. Now we just need the positioning of that cone. So let's see, hopefully we already have a tracking marker for that. And I'm just gonna sole this to kind of clean it up a little bit. And this guy looks good. He's hanging out, chilling on the cone. Let's go ahead and make a null out of that. This is our far cone. All right, and so I want the far mat to be locked onto the far cone. So I'm gonna copy that position, paste it to our mat, and now we know the mat's there. And let's turn the mat off for now. And here's our cone. And I might just make these all the same color so we know what we're working with. Maybe not brown, let's make it something we can see. Yeah, green works, cool. And so what I'm gonna do with the mat selected is I'm just gonna draw the shape of this cone. You know, it doesn't have to be anything too crazy. It's kind of off in the background, a little bit of depth of field. And we'll be able to blur the edges a little bit. So let's look at that shape. Cool, maybe I'll just give it a little bit of a, like a one pixel feathering there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set our actual cone footage, which you know, nothing on here. I actually don't even need the camera tracking data. And I'm gonna set this to an alpha mat. And now right now, let me turn the bottom layer off. Now all we have is just the cone, but since our mat is tracked onto that, we have an easy little roto mat there. Cool. All right, so there's that. Let's, uh, let's repeat the process for the cone that's nearest to us. So here we go, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of, uh, I'm just gonna duplicate these for now. And I'm gonna delete the mask on this. And again, we need that tracking data. So let me turn this footage off, select that, and whoops. Let's select this null. This is our near cone. 
get that position data, copy it. Here's our mat. I will paste that far cone data onto our mat and kind of the same process. I'm just going to draw this cone shape on our mat. I could be a little cleaner, even though the mats at the bottom is what's most important, but let's still uh, just kind of get this going in here. Might do the same thing, do like a one pixel feather. And let's see, so this near cone footage is already set to alpha mat. So when I turn it on, there's our cone tracked into the scene. This is our near mat. And the feathering of one kind of doesn't quite work for this. So let's make it a 0.5. Yeah, let's do like a 0.5. Maybe we'll expand it in just a little bit. And now let's unsolo everything. We got our line going in there. Let me fit this to our screen. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we got going on here. All right, cool. So we've got this highlighting effect going with the camera. Everything's looking not too bad. So let's do some of the kind of the final last touches just to make everything blend in a little bit. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to select everything at once because it doesn't matter too much. Toggle my modes. Let's turn motion blur on for the scene. And just to kind of... Oops, let's add a new adjustment layer just to kind of smush things together. I might add a little noise. And for that, I'm not even going to use the grain. I'm just going to use regular noise. And maybe we'll just do something like 3%. Duplicate this. I'm going to call this optics. I'm going to delete the noise because I duplicated that adjustment layer. And I'll do a little bit of optics compensation on this. And what this is going to do is kind of give us a little bit of bending towards the edges. And we're just going to kind of give that, you know, natural lens distortion. So that way, you know, when our lines sort of come, it kind of bends in the side. And it's real subtle, but you know, it's kind of just one of those natural things that happens to the eyes and optics. So cool. Well, there we go, guys. So there's kind of just a couple of quick techniques that even though we had a 2D camera track, you can use a 3D camera to still get some of that depth if you're using some additional graphics on top of it. Um, I'll put a link for that free uh, Move Anchor Point script. I really love it. I use it every single day. Uh, otherwise, again, more tutorials coming up. More tutorials next Friday. Uh, subscribe if you want to see those. And as always, I will see you guys in the next tutorial. We 3D tracked it and we have some Z space going on. And it just uh, looks pretty cool. We're going to have our beams follow it no matter where we reposition it.